So I recently placed orders with two print-on-demand brands offering personalization. As most of you know, I'm a huge advocate for this. My own print-on-demand brand has done $5 million in the last 22 months utilizing this exact strategy. It's no doubt that it is a rising trend. You look at Amazon and the homepage is personalized to you. Same with Netflix. Um, you look at BarkBox, a $100 million e-commerce company. They now personalize specific boxes. They're a subscription box company, specific boxes for specific customers. Uh -huh. This whole idea is about keepsakes and personalized gifts. So customized to whatever you love, your favorite moment, your favorite people. In this video, I want to dissect two brands, e-commerce brands that are utilizing this very formula right here um, to cash in on millions of dollars in revenue. I'd even estimate um, upwards of eight figures in revenue and we'll get into those stats in just a minute. To start, let's go ahead and look at the night sky. I want to first uh, start off by saying these guys are amazing and have their heads on straight when it comes to building a brand that people love. The night sky sells custom star maps. Customer comes to the easy to use website, enters the date and big life event and that's it. Meanwhile, you can see a preview of the map that you are customizing the entire time you are customizing it. This whole concept is interesting because if you go over to Etsy, one of my favorite product research platforms, the star map is a top rated item. You can see all the sellers that are actively selling it and getting tons and tons of reviews. Great social proof. So going out there and building a brand around something that has been validated on other platforms, absolutely genius. I made my order with them on Monday, so six days ago. First impression, lightning fast shipping. But what I'm really curious about though is, are they sourcing this product via print on demand? Of course, this could easily be done through a fulfillment center like Printful. Now, I usually can recognize return addresses and know who they're working with, but this one was a little bit tricky. I did some Google searching and found a company by the name of Black River Imaging. Although no Shopify app, it appears that they do print on demand and allow the ability for custom branding. That's a major win. I want to take you through the website and talk about some of the things that these guys are excelling at and just talk about their buying experience. Uh, but before we do that, I want to unbox uh, the star map that I ordered right before your eyes. I think that this is um, this process right here when you order from a brand is absolutely crucial uh, for customer experience um, uh, and just being able to sell your brand more to a customer. Very nicely packaged so far. Uh, no pack-in from what I am aware of, but the star map is very nicely packaged. Looking at it right now, uh, first thoughts, the quality is impeccable. I don't think I have actually seen a poster like this. They're, they must be using a different kind of uh, material that, than uh, what, what I, I have seen before. It's very thick when you look up close. The details are very, very clear. Now, upon visiting their website, you'll notice straight away how simplistic it is on their homepage. You have a hero image and a button below prompting you to create your star map. Now, an image like this can easily be gotten by an influencer on Instagram or a customer and fill a very large purpose like this one here. Upon scrolling down under this cover photo right here, we can see exactly what a star map is. What is the customer going to get? And little snippets of information like this right here, where we have a photo right here, text right here, um, it's very common nowadays, as well as all the information under it talking about the buying process. Um, it's very simple. One of my favorite brands, High Smile, actually employs a very similar strategy, strategy to this. Let me show you their homepage right here. Uh, we have little snippets of information talking about who they are, the brand, their products, all with the intent of getting the user to the product page. What I love the most is the custom coded map creator. If you've ever worked with the developer, um, you know this stuff is not cheap, which makes this a major investment given a viable business model. I'd imagine a much higher purchase conversion rate. Some personalization stores look super low quality on product pages because nothing is custom coded. They're just relying on an app for customer info. The nice guy essentially went a different direction and built something completely custom and branded to them. I went to the Wayback Machine to try and see how long they've had this and if they ever did not have it. All I could see is that it's been active since 2017, but before that, it's a little fuzzy and hard to access. One thing that you'll also notice is how simple this top bar is. Um, you're not overwhelmed with information. Some stores overdo it up here with an about page, an about page, mission page, uh, FAQ and contact page. But the reality is very minimal people actually visit these pages. Not enough people for it to be listed at the top to confuse 
um, a customer. I would recommend downloading Hotjar. It's very informative and shows you exactly what users are doing when they come to your website, what buttons they're clicking, and it really gives you perspective on how to organize your website. I give the customer experience an A. I came to the website, I knew exactly what to do, and I had confidence in my purchase. Unlike other uh, stores out there, dropship stores, even print-on-demand stores, um, you're bombarded with very useless information. The product pages are, are filled with scarcity and it really just drives you away. Uh, when I came to this brand, I got that feel that, um, hey, these guys, they, they got something great going on right here. So I abandoned Cart the first time just to see what kind of emails they would send me, um, trying to get me to come back to complete my purchase. And I was actually quite impressed. Uh, not only were the emails very simple, very easy to read, but they saved my map, the map that I created and, and closed the tab on it. They sent inside of the email, it was custom to me, and it just made it so much easier for me to go back and complete my purchase. And that was actually how um, I went back and completed my purchase was through that email. And I think that if you have a print and demand store offering personalized products and, and you can implement this right here, uh, I think it's an absolute gold mine. As for what happened after my purchase, surprisingly, I was still intrigued. I don't have a link to the thank you page, but on that page, they actually attempted to upsell me a frame with the poster. I thought it was a really nice add-in. It looked really cool. Another cool feature was the ability to edit my map before shipment and make changes. From customer experience perspective, this process is easy from start to finish and there's no stress on me if I want to make edits. I think this is a great way to delight customers because it avoids that extra step of having to contact customer service. As for post-purchase emails, they mainly just pertain to delivery and order confirmation. If it were me, I would have expanded this more to include emails telling the customer about the brand, some social proof, cross-sell email, and so on. Now, as for their Facebook ads, I think they have nailed it, and I'm gonna show you why. The ad copy right here speaks directly to the target consumer. It, it also uses very eye-catching emojis. I like how with the copy, it calls out the person. It calls out the person using um, a very special life event, and then you see this creative with this uh, star map that many people might not have seen before, um, it stops the, uh, stops the scroll. It looks like it's a mix of UGC and IGC. IGC by influencers. Influencers are getting really nice photos for you and you, and you use it uh, inside of your marketing. When it comes to print on demand, we've seen UGC to outperform anything and everything, um, especially mockups. And uh, in fact, professional photos actually perform significantly lower uh, than a customer photo that looks very natural. Um, uh, a moderately higher quality customer photo compared to a super professional photo. The, the super professional studio, studio quality photo always performs significantly lower. And I think it's just that um, pe uh, customers, pe people scrolling on social media, they, they want to see that authentic uh, authenticity and they want to see something natural. Um, you'll see this now with most big brands out there utilizing this. One of my other favorite brands, Project Repat, um, they use nearly all UGC in their ads. Now I do find it interesting that they're directing the traffic to the home page, which if you think about it, it is a great idea because it's basically a sales page with massive social proof. Um, you have all the reviews down there, you have the TV segment, you have all the happy customers and great quality photo. You're really selling the brand to somebody that comes to that, um, comes to that home page, all leading to one thing to the sale, all leading to that uh, customization page where you can start building your map. Now I can spend all day talking about their Instagram and the fan base they've been able to build, but I'll spare you most of it. Instagram is generally going to be a brand's greatest asset for engaging its audience, so buyers and subscribers. I think the night sky does a really good job with this and posting these organic pieces of content almost every day. The feed portrays that authentically, it has a consistent theme, and as I'd imagine, it aligns really well with the target customer. The question now comes down to how much are they making? Um, the answer to that is I don't know, but I would estimate it to be um, in the six figures or um, most likely multi six figures every single month. If you look at social web, uh, I'm sorry, similar web, they are getting hundreds of thousands of visits every single month. Now generally your sales will exceed the amount of visits you are getting. And if you want more social proof, consider the amount of reviews they have on their website. 18, over 18,000 reviews. Um, it's not easy to get those. If they, if they, Let's say, for instance, they are seeing a 10% conversion rate. 10% uh, of their customers go and write a review after. That would mean that they have about roughly 180,000 customers. Now, 
If you times 180,000 customers by an average order value estimated by $65, that would make their lifetime revenue over $11 million. And judging by their Facebook page, it looks like they have been in business for what I believe to be about two and a half years. Uh, next on the list, we're going to look at Piper Lou Collection. Now, I actually found out about this store from Flippa. It's for sale right now for $5 million. Um, <laughs> that's insane because the listing says it's all print on demand. They don't have a warehouse where they have um, all the shirts and, and products they're selling strictly print on demand. Uh, no in-house, nothing. I looked deeper into it and they've been in business for a while. They built a base of 450,000 raving customers that don't only shop once, but they're coming back. It's a raving following that they created because of the um, exceptional customer experience and great products that they have been able to offer. I'm not going to show you the flip of screenshots right here, but they did actually do a whopping $12 million in 2017. Uh, so that's about a million dollars a month uh, with monthly profit being in the six figures. I believe it was in the six figures for all of 2018. So I placed my order with Piper Lou on Monday and it arrived in four days. I was very impressed. I hadn't even selected a faster shipping option at checkout. When looking inside the box though, when looking at the packaging, I could clearly see it was sent via two-day priority. I think this is becoming more common. Surprising your customers, something unexpected with two-day priority shipping that they did not have to pay for, that they did not select at uh, checkout. Um, these e-com store owners, these brands are using it as another touch point to build that customer experience. When looking for what to order, I just went to the best seller section and voila, custom tumblers. Similar to the Night Sky, the product has been validated on Etsy and other sites like Personalization Mall. And the conclusion to draw from this is there's a market for it. All right, so looking at the return label right here and after doing some Googling on the Piper Lube package, I was not able to narrow in on a specific fil uh, fulfillment center that they are using. Now, my guess is they're using an app. They're partnered with somebody like Printify that basically is partnered with dozens of fulfillment centers out there and they list all the products that they have through their app. So that's what I'm assuming um, these guys, the guys are doing. They're not working with it like a standalone fulfillment center like Printful, and that's just my guess. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and unbox this. Oh, pull it out. We have the typical receipt right here. It looks like we don't have any pack-ins. Some print on demand fulfillment centers will allow you to put stickers in here. All right, so we have the tumbler right here. Custom tumbler, wow, this is actually really good quality, very good quality. And conveniently, it says on here, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Um, but it's very good quality and I actually have not seen a tumbler like this before. We've considered selling these, but um, ha haven't been able to find good quality stuff. So overall, all we had here was a receipt and then we had the product inside of the box. Nothing too fancy. However, the product is very good quality. So it's um, no wonder that uh, the customers are coming back and there, there's a, a very high repeat customer rate um, and, and they're doing so well. Overall, I'd rate my buying experience an A. Starting from the homepage, it's really nice. It looks very credible. Uh, it looks like a very established brand. They're clearly not using a generic theme. My favorite part is seeing all the customers on the homepage. You really get that community feel when you see stuff like this. But what I was really curious about was the mobile experience since that matters the most. And upon giving it a go, it offered the same gratification, very seamless. As for the product page itself, I do think it was good. However, I think there are some things that I would like to simplify more. I would remove all of the information that is up at the top, some of the unneeded information that we don't really need, maybe even put that below. Uh, info about the installment plans, I would probably turn that into just some kind of um, photo. If you go over to High Smile, you, uh, High Smile, you look at the product pages, you can see what they're doing. They have a little vector icon, very simple text next to it, and it just flows really good with the product page. I would simplify this information a lot more. From what we've seen in our own brand using Hotjar, uh, recording sessions, customers usually drop off after they read through an influx of information like this. It's actually very interesting. Right after they see it, they think that the buying process is too complicated, especially with uh, custom products, and they just leave. Um, generally, they don't even read it as well, so if you can simplify it, turn it into pictures, um, I, I think that that would perform significantly better. I'd also add some customer images inside of the image carousel for more social proof and show um, that people are actually holding the product. And, and um, you know, uh, customers looking at the, the product page, they can see that somebody like themselves has bought that product. And it's, it's just, 
Um, personally, something that I really like to, to implement. So after adding to cart, I really enjoyed the upsell experience. It's designed very nicely. Um, as for the checkout experience, personally, I'm not a fan of the countdown timers. Most big brands out there don't do this. And from what I've seen, um, we've actually done this before with this countdown timer. Removing the countdown timer did not affect conversions. Um, I just never really liked that form of scarcity at checkout. Um, uh, as for the reinforcement badges top and bottom, um, that talk about the, the satisfaction guarantee. I think that those are great to have. Um, that's usually a big objection that customers have is, hey, if I don't like the product, am I going to be able to return it? So I think conquering that objection at checkout when people have their credit card ready is a great thing to do. Now for their marketing channels, it looks like they drive traffic from Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and emails. The very common known platforms, but one of the ones I wanna highlight is Snapchat. Uh, I think it's a very underutilized platform and I give this brand credit for utilizing it. I was at an e-commerce event a few months ago and one of the speakers who uh, is very heavy with Snapchat as for a big uh, e-commerce brand in the car niche, he was talking about how if you have a female demographic that is young, and you're not on Snapchat, you're essentially missing out on a gold mine. You're missing out on tons of sales. And it was a big revelation to me. You know, why, why, why are we not using Snapchat ads? Why, why are we just using what everybody else is talking about? And I, I did a little bit of market research. I asked my brothers who just got out of high school. I asked them, what platform are you guys on right now? What are you, what's everybody using? And the answer was Snapchat. Uh, they don't have a Facebook and they very seldom use uh, Instagram. So it, it, it's just very interesting to see that and, and the whole other essentially blue ocean that's that's available um, compared to the platform uh, of Facebook ads that is so commonly talked about and so commonly used by all these e-commerce brands out there. Now looking at their Facebook ads, they're clearly advertising mostly custom products, a lot of ads up for that. They have a very similar copy and creative style to the night sky. But what really stuck out to me, uh, besides the prospecting ads, was this ad right here. Uh, a phenomenal retargeting ad, massive social proof with the copy itself and the image of people actually holding the product, customers holding the product. If you can get an image like this from a customer, from an influencer, put it in your marketing, marketing dynamic, they are invaluable. Conclusion here, it looks like they did about $15 million in 2018, according to Flippa, and have been in business since 2016. Not bad at all, considering those monthly sales and profit. Um, it's very, very impressive. The listing actually notes that these founders know how to run ads effectively. They, they know that skill, and I think it really speaks for itself when you look at the brand. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you got value out of it, go ahead and comment down below brand, along with your video feedback, and I'll pick one person to do a one-on-one -on -one with by next week. We can talk strategy. We can go over um, your store, whatever you prefer. With that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.